the outside deck covered by a wood trellis with grapes growing over our heads. Very nice and cool, especially since it's warmed up here recently. Good place to bring your glass out or your bottle or your cheese and crackers you get here and enjoy the view and the shade and the peacefulness. Walking around the side of the patio, I saw this. I'm not sure what it is, but it is either a horseshoe court or a kid's sandbox with a picnic table just above it. I imagine parents can sit on the covered patio below under the grape trellis covering, sipping wine while keeping an eye on their kids in the sandbox, I would guess. But enough kids play. Let's go in and check out the tasting room and learn about their wines here. As we enter the red door, we see they are the 2021 Oregon Winery of the Year. The tasting room is elegant and spacious. So let's go over now and find out about the wines they produce here. So welcome to Cardwell Hill. We are family owned and operated. Dan and Nancy bought the vineyard in 2000. It was considered abandoned vineyard when they did. They kept the first six rows on this property alone and replanted 47,000 plants. And out of that 47,000 plants, we produce about 8,000 cases per year off of our property. It all comes from us. We do not bring anybody else's fruit in and we do not sell our fruit to anybody else to make wine out of. It is all estate grown, bottled and produced right here in our facilities. So we have a beautiful, uh, place where you can come and sit down and enjoy our wines on our terrace and watch our vineyards grow and we are pet friendly and family friendly we have coloring books for the children to keep the parents happy so we have three chilled wines um, we are this year's 2021 oregon winery of the year courtesy of wine press northwest um, out of the competition that we were invited to from the platinum competitions, we got three more platinums and two double golds. So if you want a fun place to come and visit, come and see us here at Cardwell Hill Cellars in Columbus, Oregon. After the wine tasting and buying, I walked around the area through the vineyards looking at the different varieties of grapes grown. Heading back to the RV, I noticed the crew was busy working at the winery cleaning bins and getting ready for the day's harvest. After going back to my RV and checking on the girls, I had an appointment for a tour through their winemaking facility. When I arrived, they had already collected three large bins of grapes. Now I will find out how they are processed here. The surrounding machinery was loud, sporadic, and hard to buffer for this part of the video. And then uh, it all depends on what we're making. If we're making uh, the rosé or pinot gris or blanc, if that's the case, then we immediately go into our press and it squeezes the juice out and then it goes directly into one of our fermenters. And if we're making uh, pinot noir, then we uh, weigh our bins and then we take it and load it up on our uh, distiller and then from there we sort the fruit, we pick out debris or stems, uh, sticks or anything else that may be in there or uh, partritis which is mold and then it comes down and destems and we have a fermenter that sits underneath here which catches the fruit and the juice. And then the skins uh, get shot off over here, and then at the end of the season, we take it back and put it back on our plants. So, um, we have to weigh our fruit bins so that we know how much weight is in our fermenters because the forklift will only pick up so much of it. So, but yeah, and then um, we go in here. Once we get done, then we go in here and all these fermenters are not stacked up like this. They are all down on the ground, and so we have um, we have numbers on our 
uh, fermenters so we know what fruit is going into it. Um, then we know what's going on. And then after it's, uh, it's processed, then we take and we drain the juice down into our barrel room. And then it sits in our barrels for 14 to, or 10 months to 30 months, all depends on what we're making. So you want to go down to the barrel room? Okay. That smells good in here. <laughs> so at the end of the down here, and on this side we have uh, openings that we can actually put our hose down through and then fill each one of our barrels with the products from each fermenter. So um, we have Monet back there. Um, we have Wayneville. So we label our barrels and we know what fermenters that would come on that would go into each one of our barrels. So. so are these in rows of different uh, wines? Or? Yes. Yes. So we have our Monet back there, our waiting bills here. And these are the ones that are actually being aged longer. So we've already processed the ones for our 10 months. So now we're moving forward to do um, our aging to uh, from 21 months to 30 months. All depends on what's going on. Um, and then all these barrels have been cleaned so that when we go to start our new process, then um, so they're all been sanitized. So we can start putting our products back in. Yeah, it's, uh, this would make a really nice room freshener to smell. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. such a nice, sweet smell. So how many barrels do you have here? Oh my gosh, I could not tell you. I know oh. it's a lot. Because we have some of them in here, and we have some of them stacked up over there. And um, it's a lot of barrels. And um, so all these are ready to go. So these, the ones that have the bones on them, uh -huh. have, have wine in them. The oh. ones that have the paper cups mean that we have already sanitized them and ready to go for our next product. Wow. And then we have some new barrels that we intertwine. So um, if you notice that they've got a wrap on them right now, uh -huh. that means that they're brand new barrels. We never use them. We just got them in, so we'll be using them this year. Um, we alternate, we get new barrels and old barrels that are still usable. So we reuse our barrels several years. So, so how long before they, they don't uh, leach that flavor you want from the barrel? Then we can test that. So the minute it starts to go with a flavor we don't want, we actually mark it for sale. So we actually sell our barrels to the public. Oh, okay. For them to use. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And we use about four to five different uh, French barrels. So, because each one of the different uh, manufacturers have a little different flavor in them. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This is this is a lot of barrels. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of barrels. That is a lot of wine to drink. That 
Yeah. Yeah. So, does it go in these? It goes. So, our rosé and our pinot gris go into our great big uh, fermenters here, which will age for about three months. And then um, we, um, after they get done processing for three months, then we can, like in January, we'll bottle those. But we, we move them from tank to tank to clean and to filter before we bottle it. So don't trip over that. Um, and this so is where you bottle it over here? This is, yes, this is our bottling line. So when I say we do everything, we do everything. Wow. So we have somebody standing down here at the, at the beginning and they load empty bottles into the machine. And then... Um, there's a little bit of nitrogen that's put in, and then it goes through and it fills. We have eight nipples, the tank is full, and it runs from the tanks that we have, draws into there, and actually puts, this is a cork machine, and so it sits, it will set out, and it will do 750 milliliters. If it's a little over, then it sucks it out, and then the cork is automatically pushed out. After the cork is put in, then it comes down through here, our capsules are put on and sealed on. Then it's rolled through our label machine, labels it, comes out, and comes out here with everything done to it. And then somebody is here with the table and then puts 12 bottles into the case. Oh, just like this one here? Yep, just like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is something. This is, an, this is an Italian bottling line. Italian? Italian. Italian made. Yes, sir. Wow. Yep. I didn't know you could do it in such a small area. Oh, yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. So. So. Everything is like climate controlled and all that? It is climate controlled. The barrel room is, is underground. It stays about 65 degrees in there. And if it gets too cold, then we can open the door and some of the heat will go in. So we try to keep it closed so that the barrels, you know, because they like that 65 degrees. So it's pretty cool. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to Ab show us around. Yeah. It's always interesting to see how this is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty fascinating. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. Well, here we are in the large parking area for Harvest Hosts, right behind the main wine tasting building there in front of us. And we're up here in the coastal mountains again, up in a vast vineyard. You'd never think of finding vineyards up here in the mountains. At least I wouldn't. And up yonder is quite the house. That huge home on the hill fascinated me, and I wanted to get a closer look at it, so I walked up the hill through the vineyard. To me, it was a grand mansion with sweeping views looking back down the hill towards the mountains and the winery. This is far above my standard of living back home. I can only imagine the number of bathrooms there are to clean. Walking up closer to the mansion, I really see how huge it is with a circle drive and a center fountain. Afterwards, I walked back down to the winery's covered deck with my girls to enjoy the sunset before returning to the RV for the night. <laughs> oh. Morning. Oh, I must look a mess. I was sleeping so well last night. And uh, Sarah, every night, has dreams of chasing critters. And her dreams are not just, you know, running. Her dreams are like 
a rocket. She's vroom, and she gets them legs going and it's like being punched in the gut by Bruce Lee. Sharp, quick jerks. And uh, whew, took me a while to go back to sleep. <laughs> Had to get my stomach to quit hurting. Because uh, depending on how we're sleeping in our arrangement here, either I get pummeled against the back with her hind kicks or in the stomach. But anyway, looking at our itinerary, we uh, are heading towards winery number nine today. And uh, I've got to say, each one is just great. They're all different. They're in different territories of the Willamette Valley. And uh, it's something you all should do. You know, this is an awesome idea for a vacation or a road trip. And the dogs are doing great. Kate's off leash, hangs around us, kind of watches over both Sarah and myself and our RV. Sarah's happy. She's out there looking for critters. I take them for long walks a couple times a day out here. Anyway, it's a beautiful day. It's supposed to be 82 today and in the high 70s tomorrow and the next day and I left my shorts at home. All I've got is long pants and warm clothes because well up in Washington it ain't that great. Not this warm, that's for sure. Anyway, you guys hang in there. <laughs> We're on our way once again. Bye.